In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these really cute cathedral window ornaments. You can use them on your tree. You can give them as little gifts. You can use it as a gift tag. And it is made out of two circles of fabric. This is a great way to use your scrap fabric. So the first thing I'm going to use is this circle ruler. I'm using a six inch by Lori Holt. If you do not have a circle ruler, you can check the description below for a link to get a template. It's literally just a six inch circle and that will make this ornament of this size, which is about, let's see, two and a half to two and three quarter inch square. Then the other things you're gonna need, I, I put a little bell on this. I just got this thing of 40 bells at the Dollar Tree, or you could use buttons or any kind of little decorative element. It just adds a little bit extra to that. And then I just got a spool of one eighth inch wide ribbon to use for the hangers. And you could do anything. You can use gold, you can use ribbon, you can use twine, just depends on what you want that to look like. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out circles. So I just took this little scrap strip of fabric. This is one of my designs from Riley Blake, and it came with the white, green, and black background. So I'm gonna play with it. So I folded it three ways, and then here's a fourth. So I'm gonna cut four at a time. And you can do this if you're careful, if you're a rotating um, cutting mat and a really sharp rotary blade. Then you're just going to push down with your hand flat on here and just be really gentle and slow and make sure you're going all the way around. You wanna go around as far as you can while you're still keeping that rotary blade against the circle. At some point, you're gonna see it's gonna veer off a little bit. So that's when you pick it up and you move your mat and you just keep going. It usually takes me three to four different cuts with my rotary blade to get all the way around this circle but I do love this circle ruler that I can just run my blade around and get a nice perfect circle every time. Now that we have some circles cut, you're going to choose two. So you'll notice on this ornament, the one, the print that shows the most is the holly print. And then I used a solid for the other side. So you could do red, red would go through there. We'll try that this time. So now I'm gonna put these right sides together and then we're gonna stitch all the way around with a quarter inch seam and leave just a really, really small section to turn it. The first one I did, I left about that much and then I found it was really difficult to get it ironed well to keep that curve. So do inch and a half, two inches at the most. It'll be a little harder to turn. So go back and forth a little bit on each side because that's gonna be strained a little bit, but then it is going to be a lot easier to press it into a nice circle when we're done. The next thing you need to do is clip the fabric around the outside of the curve because otherwise when you turn it, you're not going to get a nice circle shape. And there's two ways to do that. You can do it the traditional way and you can take little scissors and just do little snips. You can do triangles, however you want. But this is my favorite way, pinking shears. They're not the least expensive scissors, but I think they're worth the investment if you just wanna get things like this done faster. So I'm just going close to the stitching, but make sure you do not hit the stitching. And I'm going to use the pinking shears and go all the way around. And this is going to make this turn really nicely. It's a lot easier on your hands than doing a bunch of little snips on curves like this, and it's fast. However, when I do this, I do not do pinking where it is left open because then you're not gonna have enough room to press that under. So I only do it where the stitching is and I leave the part that's open the full quarter inch. So once you cut it all the way around, then we are going to just really carefully turn that right side out. And as I said, it's a small hole, but it's gonna make it a lot easier once you get that turned. So what I do is I try and turn it down and I flip that all the way down. It's gonna put less pressure on those seams as you're pulling this fabric through. And then just kind of pinch it together just to help, help it get in there even better. And then I just take my finger and run it along that seam line to get it as pressed out into a circle as possible. And then we're just going to have this little small section to tuck under and try and curve with the iron before we top stitch that. 
and then just kind of push it with your fingers just to make sure it's still out and that gives a nice circle shape. You can see it better on this side. Now that we have this turned right side out, now we need to get this opening pushed under and we need to get this pressed. So because this is pretty small and this part is pretty small, I'm going to be using my Cricut Mini Press because I have it and I feel like it's a nice size to use on a project like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to get this turned under and into a curve shape as well as I can. And this is exactly why we wanted the smallest opening possible because it's honestly not super easy to get an opening like this into a curve. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's not like we're making a round coaster and you're gonna see all of this curve at once, but you wanna try and do it as well as possible. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna press all the way around, making sure I'm focusing on pressing the outside where all those seams are. Now we're gonna go sew this and then we will press it and then I'll show you how to fold it and stitch it and get this done. This is so quick and easy. Now this is our goal, the cathedral window ornament. We're gonna make this from this circle that we have sewn. So the fabric that you have on top will be the main fabric that gets folded over. The fabric on the bottom will become the back and just these little accent peek out colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half and you can eat, you can finger press it or you can just give it a little bit of a press. I found giving it a little bit of a press didn't change it, but it made it a little bit easier for the next part when we get to hand sewing. So then you're gonna open that up and you're going to fold it again, matching the seam that you just pressed. Then we're gonna fold it again. It's like we're making pie, do a little press there. And then we are going to fold it one more time. Give it a little press there. Now we're going to open it up and you can see where these lines are. You can see it better on this side. You can see where these lines are and we're going to use those as guides. So I have a needle and I put white thread on it. I just doubled it and knotted it there. And we're going to start by folding the side that you want to be your main fabric. Make sure that stays on the inside. I'm going to put the knot right there on that seam. And then I'm just going to do like three, I don't know, two, probably two stitches is fine. To hold that together, at that spot. So now it kind of looks like fortune cookery or a cannoli. Now we're going to take this little fold here and we're going to stitch that to the center as well. And again, I'm just gonna do two little stitches. And you probably guessed it, we're now gonna bring up that fourth fold. So this is really why we did those folds so that we can know exactly how to get the, the quarters, each quarter mark into the center. So we're not quite to where we wanna be, are we? So now we're going to just use our hands and organize these four kind of petal shapes so that they're standing up and so that the red is creating a bit of a square. And we're gonna press down on that and we're going to iron each of these little sections. And this is another place where this tinier heat press works really well. You don't have to go buy one, obviously, if you don't have one, but if you're a crafter and you have one of these, this is a great project for this to bleed over into your sewing projects. So now we have some nice creases there. And now we're gonna take each of these petals, you're gonna hold on the red, both sides, you're gonna kind of put your thumbs like that to press that down and then you're just going to flip this triangle to the back. And you can kind of move that so that puffs out a little bit. See, so easy and you're gonna do that for all four. Christmas tree ornaments are a great way to use up extra scraps, great for little gifts. They're great gifts for people that are just starting out. Maybe it's their first Christmas tree. You can just whip up a couple, to, you know, a variety of different fabric ornaments for them that would make a great gift around Halloween or Thanksgiving, depending on when they put up their tree. When do you put up your Christmas tree? I have friends that put it up the day after Halloween. 
I have other people that always wait until after Thanksgiving. I usually do it the weekend after Thanksgiving myself. So look at that, it's pretty much almost done. For this design, you can hang it from the corner like that, or you can sew it on and have it hang as a square. 